Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about how to find your first medical coding job without experience in 2024. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so you have completed your medical billing and coding program, you've gotten your certification, or maybe you haven't gotten your certification yet and you're going to sit for it soon. Uh, here's some things that you should know when you're trying to find your first job in medical coding. The first thing that I tell people to do is make sure that you are armed with a good resume. A good resume will be on one page. There are no excuses for a brand new medical coder uh, to have a multiple page resume when you don't have experience in the field yet. Okay, that's number one. Number two, I've given plenty of tips about uh, the resumes. You can look through my videos on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Um, so that way you can see all the steps broken down, but that's not the message for today. <laughs> uh, but I will say this, you do need to have on your resume next to your name, you do need to have your credentials. I have seen many as a resume writer myself. Um, I write resumes for almost any, <laughs> almost any profession. I've done a lot of different professions other than medical coding, but I've seen a lot of brand new coders that come to me who've said, I've, I've tried to send my resume out. I had it done uh, by somebody else. And when I look at it, their credentials are not on their name. Your credentials need to be on your name, period. There is no excuse for not having your credentials on your name when you are putting out your resume, because these managers, these hiring managers, they get hundreds of thousands sometimes of resumes and they're looking at all these resumes so if yours is not right to the point and quick and i'm not going to have to sit here and do an easter egg hunt to try to find out what credentials you hold right um you want to make sure that you are very upfront right away if you even if you have a cpca the certified professional coder apprentice and that is a credential offered with the American Academy of Professional Coders. Now, this credential says that the individual has less than two years of experience as a medical coder. And some people say, oh, it's dreaded. I can't find a job with it. And even if you do all the things to get, to have the apprentice status removed uh, in an accelerated fashion, because it takes two years of work history in order to get it removed, but you can get it removed quicker by doing other things, going through an approved program with AAPC, taking practice code and the like. So that's the thing. That removal of that apprentice status is not going to automatically magically get you a job just because you have a CPC. Because guess what? You still have no experience, right? And so if you are saying, okay, well, I don't have an apprentice status anymore and I'm just going to go ahead and start applying and you still keep getting rejections, you're like, okay, well, what's the deal? More times than not, people that are brand new are searching for those magical entry-level words. You cannot look for entry-level words when you are a brand new medical coder. You can't, guys, because guess what happens when somebody puts out entry-level in their job listing? They have lots of people who are going through the same thing, applying for that job, trying to get that job, clamoring to get that job because it says entry-level. Well, I need training and I need this and I, okay. If you're saying that you still need training and coding, you need to be practicing more before attempting to get out there because these employers will expect you to understand what you're doing. Well, no blue, I just need hands-on learning. I understand that. And you can do that certainly, but if you are not practicing while you're out there looking for a job, you're going to start to lose that skill really quickly. Okay. So, Make sure that your resume is down to one page. Uh, it does not, your work history does not go back more than 10 or 15 years, okay? We don't need to know that you worked in the early 2000s or in the 90s, sometimes in the 80s, okay? I've seen those too. Don't do that, guys. You don't want to date yourself, all right? It's not keeping information from the employer because if they need a more extensive work history, they will let you know. But you just need the last 10 or 15 years because that's going to be the most recent experience that you have. 
and you need to say how these positions that you are in, how they can uh, show transferable skill uh, to medical coding. All right, so uh, I'm gonna leave that there. <laughs> but you are going to go ahead and apply for jobs, even though they're asking for experience. Apply anyway. If you are waiting for them to say, oh, brand new people, welcome with open arms, you will be waiting forever, guys. Don't self-reject yourself because the job says three to five years experience. They're always going to say three to five years of experience because they don't want inexperienced people to apply because they don't want to have to train. But guess what happens, guys? If happy coders are in that area, they're going to stay with their current employer, which means that that employer that is looking for coders is going to have to hire somebody because they're going to need some help, right? But if you had the guts to go ahead and apply, even though they're asking for experience, you will be the person that they call because you know what? They're going to say, okay, well, we're going to give you an assessment test and see how you do. And if you can pass that assessment test and they are desperate enough, then they will hire you. But you are not going to get a call if you do not apply. All right. So again, they say, no, no, no. Yes. I, as a veteran coder, am telling you to apply anyway. And the people who have listened to me have said numerous times, I've gotten numerous emails, numerous posts on my social medias. Thank you, Blue, for telling me to uh, apply even though I didn't have experience because guess what? I just got a job. You cannot assume that you know what that employer is going through. You cannot assume that you know that they're going to automatically reject you, okay? So having a medical coding certification says that you are competent in all of the domains that were tested on that exam, right? Which is gonna be all about outpatient or outpatient and inpatient coding, okay? So with that said, if you have a certification, you are going to go out there and put out a really good resume that is one page and you are going to apply even though they're asking for experience. Because other than that, guys, you will not get hired. If you are so scared, and now is not the time to be scared, now is not the time to be shy, now is not the time for any of those things. You have education. You are not going in not knowing what ICD-10-CM is, or CPT, or higgs picks or ICD-10-PCS. You know what all of those things are. And if you've been taking your studies seriously, which I hope you have, right? If you've been taking your studies seriously, then you will be able to get through and to be able to uh, code out all of these things like you need to. You may get some of these wrong. Somebody was commenting the other day and they said that they were given a three hour assessment test and they had asked the person who gave them the test, this coding test, what was the passing score? And the person said, the person either was an HR or somebody else, and they said, oh, well, um, we don't have a passing score. Well, technically, every place is going to have a passing score. But what happens is they don't want the person to focus on a particular score. The employer needs to see the maybe there's potential there. So, yeah, well, you may not have done well, sometimes... They can say, well, you know what? This person shows potential or they were able to get this question right. And maybe certain questions are weighted differently, right? And maybe during this test, you have some that are a little bit harder than others. And what if you were able to get those really hard ones that you, that other people might think they're hard, but because you're brand new and you're newly certified and your knowledge is fresh in your mind and this was nothing for you to get through, it was really easy. Think about that, guys. So don't get hung up on, I'm looking at a score. Because sometimes they do, and sometimes they won't. But sometimes if they're telling you there's no score, it's because they want to see your potential. Okay? So that's something to think about. And it's something that not to be discouraged about. Now, if you do take a test and they say, well, you know, our passing score is a 95% and you scored a 90. You can kindly ask them if you can if it's possible that you can retake that exam. Sometimes they will let you and sometimes they won't. It really all depends. But you never know unless you ask. A lot of people are just like, I feel like 
I don't know. They, they're waiting for people to tell them, oh, it's okay. Well, if you need permission <laughs> to ask, hey, do you think I could take this test again? I was just nervous. Uh, I'm brand new to the field and I would really like a chance to work at this facility. Could you let me take the test again? This is simple as that. They could, uh, all they could say is yes or no, right? That's all they could say is yes or no. So think about that. The, the passing score is a 95%, but you got a 90. So technically you did pass, but not enough for them, not enough for that facility. So again, it's not something for you guys to take personally that it's going to be like, oh, well, I didn't do this. And it's, it's the job searching process is the hardest part. <laughs> And this is what weeds out a lot of people because they let their emotions and their ego get into it too. They do. And that is the worst thing because if you allow your emotions to control whether you are looking for a job or whether you're going to keep looking for a job or whether you are um, just going to give it up, if you allow your emotions to, to dictate to you what you're going to do, you are going to be searching forever for something. We all have the ability to critical think. We all have the ability to uh, propel ourselves forward even when we don't feel like it. There are times when even myself, when I get very tired, but you know what I say? I have a lot of responsibility. I have to keep going. I have to get up. I have to do these things, even though I don't want to sometimes, <laughs> but I still do them anyway. Why? Because it's important to me. And my life is fulfilled because of that, because of my drive, because of all the things that I get to do. And when you get knocked down, you got to get right back up. Because if it takes one or two hits to knock you out, then you didn't really want this anyway, did you? I'm asking you to think about that. And not because I'm trying to put you down or trying to be callous. Somebody told me that the other day. You're so callous. No. Callous has nothing to do with it. Callous has nothing to do with it. What I do is I get you guys to think. I'm not going to sit here and coddle you and let you say, oh, well, I just want to give up. Oh, you know what? You're right. Just give up. Why? Because you, you're, you may be this close. That next job that you're applying for may be the one that hires you. But you're never going to know that if you stop applying. You're never going to know that if you don't just take a chance. Because remember, guys, it is free to apply to these jobs. There is no charge. <laughs> if they're charging you, then you don't obviously need to be applying there. Because what's the worst that could happen? They don't call you. They say no. They call you in for an interview and say, well, you know what? Uh, uh, we need people with experience. Well, guess what? You just got two things out of that meeting. Even though you say, oh man, these people wasted my time. Maybe so. But guess what you got? You got to have that feeling of going to an interview. And if you're paying attention and listening to what they have to say, because a lot of times people will listen to respond and not listen to understand. So if you're listening to these people, they're telling you, they are telling you to your face what other employers are looking for. And if you feel like, okay, well, I didn't answer that one strongly. Let me make sure that I am prepared for the next time. So you get to, you get that first hand of like, okay, this is what they're going to ask in an interview. This is what they're going to be looking for. Uh, this is what they're, they're going to be separating me from everybody else. If I have this strong knowledge, if you're paying attention, guys, if you're paying attention, you'll get that first thing. The second thing is you are going to get a chance to practice interviewing. You're going to get a chance to be able to get more confident when you're walking into an office and you're, you're doing that face-to-face -face interview because everybody gets nervous on interviews, even corporate people <laughs> who are just you know, in these high level executive C-suite um, positions, even they get nervous, but they learn to regulate their emotions, which is what you need to do. Because guess what? It doesn't stop here because even when you do get the job, oh, you get the job. It's a great day in the neighborhood, right? It's a great day in the neighborhood. But guess what happens 
when you get that job and you start working with your providers. And guess what? They're not going to be so keen to want to listen sometimes. Sometimes they are going to argue against you. And they're going to be like, well, why do I need to do this? No, I'm the doctor. You're going to give me the codes that I want. And you have to be able to be strong enough and stand up to them and say, we are teammates. Your documentation does not support the codes that you have selected that you want. And because of this, they have to be changed to these codes because this supports more of what you're doing here. Now, this is when that education can come into play. And that is going to take a lot of strength. That's going to take a lot of self resolve <laughs> to be able to do that because that does get nerve wracking. But again, it all goes back to being able to regulate your emotions and not allowing your emotions to take over. When you're looking for a job and all of the rejection, every single rejection, rejection is a redirection. I know you've heard that before, but it's true. It is a redirection. And think about this. As long as you are able to work in some capacity, some way, maybe it's not encoding right now, but as long as you're able to work, you still have the ability to be able to bring money in. Okay. And if you're doing something like I used to have to do when I was looking for a medical coding job, my first medical coding job, and I was getting all these no's and I was just like, but I don't understand. You know, I did really good on the test and I was the only one in my class to pass the first time. What is happening here? And I'm like, I don't understand this. I didn't understand this. And that was 15 years ago. <laughs> it was 15 years ago and I didn't understand what was happening. But when you look at, okay, well, uh, they want experience because of all of the detail that goes into it. And I still continue to work bartending where I'd have to deal with drunk people who talk to you all kinds of crazy ways. And you just have to take it because you need a job and you need money to be able to have a roof over your head and food on the table and be able to pay your bills and not have the uh, creditors calling you because I, I'm late on my uh, vehicle payment. <laughs> bartending halfway house. I did that on the weekends and, um, or sometimes I did it during the weekdays. And these are people who had disabilities who could not live on their own, but they, they could live on their own, but they still needed somebody to watch them. So that's what I did. And these are people that you have a hard time sometimes communicating with them because they don't understand, you know, and it's like, little kids but they're adults and so it makes it very difficult and you have to treat them with dignity and you have to be able to understand and know what to do in an emergency situation i did that i worked at the concession stand um at the uh, at a big stadium and so i was <laughs> i was on call on the weekend and i would be standing on my feet for 12 13 hours sometimes um serving beer or serving nachos or doing all kinds of things and my feet hurt so bad and i'm working these three jobs thinking oh gosh you know i I've, I've i've been to school why can't i get a job and it wasn't until i listened and that's the whole goal right is to listen but you know sometimes people don't listen it's just like kids and teenagers they don't want to listen either but guess what if they had listened then their life would be a little bit easier. So when I listened, finally, my mom told me, go back to the school and ask them to help you and see if they know anybody that's hiring. I went back to the school. I talked to the principal. The principal said, okay, well, my friend has a temporary agency and I'm going to uh, send you over there because it's a temporary agency for medical professionals. And I said, I don't want a temp job. I want a real job. Again, because I know everything, right? I know everything. And so I, he goes, well, Think about this. He goes, every single temp assignment that you get as a coder or even in, in a coding type environment, all of that is filler for your resume. So that way, when you go and you apply for more jobs, you're going to have these skills already. Even though you work temp jobs, it's okay because the temp jobs don't, you don't need experience. They just need a body to fill the seat for a little while. Right? So he goes, just give it a try. Went over there to the temp agency, did their assessment test, passed their assessment test and say, okay, give us a week. And I'm thinking, ah, you know, that's, you know, this is just going to be another uh, waste of my time because, you know, they've, I've been hearing that. Sure enough, in a week, they called me. 
they go, hey, we've got a three month assignment for you. If you're willing to take it, um, they're going to hire three people, yourself included. Uh, so two other ladies, and they're going to pick one of you at the end of this three month assignment to stay on permanently. And then the other two are going to be let go. It does this work for you. I said, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. If it meant that I had to stop working at the bar and, you know, standing on my feet, if it meant that I was happy because I could always go back to that. That's what I looked at too. This is what I look at today, too. If I had to go back <laughs> to doing that, I would do that. I would go back to cleaning houses, too, because, again, I can work. This is not the end of the road for me, right? And so having that gives you a little bit more, okay, I can do anything. So I worked that job for three months. I learned neoplasm coding, which you want to be shoved into the deep end of the pool. That's the way to do it. And I tell y'all to apply at the temp agencies. You know how many emails I get him and Han about how, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do Then why are you asking? Why are you telling me? Why are you telling me? I'm telling you what helped me to be successful in my career and how I got my first job. Right? So I didn't get the job, right? Didn't get the job. That was okay. They said, okay, well, you know what? We have another assignment. We we we're, we're going to try to get you another assignment as soon as we can so i said okay that's fine and remember i didn't get hired on because I, i'm not uh technical <laughs> i had a lot of technical ability it was the manager herself which is fine it's okay <laughs> personalities don't always match up right so they called me and a few days later and they said you know we do have another assignment that we just got but it was eight hours away from my hometown and they go if you move over there um, on your, on your own, uh, you'll have a job there for the next five years. And of course I said, no, <laughs> I was not leaving my mom. My mom was sick and my mom says, oh no, you're going, you're going to go, you're going to get your experience and then you're going to come back here and then you're going to be able to, you know, work here and do all the things that you want to here, get experience and then come back. So my mom helped me move. She paid for me to move. She paid for me to get an apartment and do all these things and get there. And then I worked there for less than one year. It was like eight to 10 months I was there. And then I was just like, no, it was less. It was like eight something, eight months, eight months I was there. And I applied for as close as I could get to my hometown, which is my forever home right now. And I got it. I got it. And I was here. And so when I, she helped me move here, <laughs> helped me move from there to here. And all because I listened and I took the advice of my mother and I was able to, to uh, go to my uh, second job, which trained me in inpatient professional services. And I was able to take those skills and that was what got me my job here because that's the coder they needed, a professional fee coder. And now look, I've been here ever since, 15 years. Because I listened. So, I'm just saying. With that said, <laughs> apply, guys. Apply. Apply even though they're asking for experience. Apply even though you're getting rejected. Be gracious when you are getting rejected. And I know that's hard. But you can do it. Because everything builds character. Every rejection is a redirection. Remember that. If you hear anything that I say... Every rejection is a redirection. If you don't get something, there is a reason. And sometimes that's just the universe, their protection for you. So you think about that. I'm just saying. And with that said, best of luck to you out there, guys. Okay? You can do it. Do not give up. Apply even though they're asking for experience. And I'm going to keep saying that. Share this video with others so that it can help them as well, guys. And whatever you do, don't complain on LinkedIn that you can't find a job because that is the worst place that you can complain because those are going to be your future co-workers. I'm just saying. With that said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you all next time. Bye.